Hello everybody, my name is Jan Dufour and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today I'm going to use the stamp called Watercolor World. It's just one stamp and as you can imagine and as you can see in the picture, there are areas that are not quite as dark as the other. Some somewhat like are distinctive but it doesn't claim that fame here. A lot of times watercoloring is done with watercolor pencils, with um, uh, our ink pads or ink spots, or drops rather, re the re-inkers. There's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, baby wipes, that's a really popular one. They're all kind of messy. <laughs> and while I don't mind getting messy, uh, sometimes it's just nice to not have to get into the weeds with all of the equipment. So today I'm gonna show you how to make this card. As you can see, it looks like it's watercolored, and that's partly because of the stamp and partly about how I applied the ink to it. Um, we're going, I had to use another one because I wanted the sentiment on the outside, you mean the world to me, and I thought that was kind of cute since that's the world. But you could make this card with no sentiment and then on the inside just write something for you. So that's what we're gonna make today. Um, I'm gonna have all the measurements down below. I'm gonna move this aside. If you need to reach me, my website, if you're watching this on YouTube, is stampmesilly.com. My email is jandufour at yahoo.com. And if you like to order any of the things that are here, you can go to jandufour.stampinup.net. I'll put this aside and we'll get going. So the first thing you need, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same color um, and then at the end, I will show you some samples of other cards I made. Um, so you have one folded card. It's the normal A2 card turned sideways. You need two sheets of the basic white that has been trimmed down to the first layer, which is four by five and a quarter. One for the inside and then one on the stamp. Now what I'm gonna do is get this all prepped so that I can do three iterations with a one inking. Yes, that's what I said. Um, <laughs> let me show you kind of what that looks like. So I have three, three here for getting this stamped. Now, when you do it the first time, this is about what you get. I'm, I'm blending slightly different colors. I moved the balmy blue to the center. Um, I got rid of the yellow. There, there's nothing wrong with the yellow, but I just didn't want it there. I wanted more green, so I put a green in there um, and then rearranged the colors. Now, this is the first one. After putting the dauber through it and huffing on it, where you put your breath on it so that it gets moist again because it takes time to go all the way across. The next time, I misted it with our mini pulverate pulverizing or pulverizer um, spray mist. The point is, is it's very fine droplets and you don't get water spots. And then I did it again. And as you can see, all of these are quite useful. Um, I will be using all of them as a matter of fact. But um, so to do this the first time, I'm gonna open all my stamp pads. And I'm using Old Olive, um, Balmy Blue, and Rich Razzleberry. I'm using daubers, and I'm just gonna go from left to right, and we just daub it. This is a really good technique for people who don't re-ink their stamp pads, <laughs> because what happens is you use the ink that's all in the middle, um, and if you'll notice, I think you can see me, I'm going to the corners to pick up the ink because that's where the most, uh, most of the ink is. Now, if you've just re-inked, it's gonna be very inky all over, and that's fine too, I'm just, going to where I know there's more ink. And it's kind of hard to see if you have enough ink on it, so it's kind of a surprise every time you do it, which is kind of fun. Um, and when you look at the results, at first I thought, what did I get all over this card? They have all the islands on here. So the little dots are like supposed to be there when you look at the actual um, stamp. So do not, fear if you get little what you think are stray marks they're little islands so you wouldn't want to miss out on those all right and then i'm going to take this as the darkest color not 
the reason why I'm using it last. It just happens to be the darkest color. So I'm mindful of that because I do want some blending to happen. I don't know how much will actually blend with the balmy blue because that's pretty, pretty light in comparison. But I do want to make sure I have all of the islands and all of that. It seems to take a little bit of time, but you get three cards out of it, if you will. Um, I'm just trying to blend them in a little bit better over here and then a little bit over here. Okay, and now is when we get to have the surprise. So it is a very big stamp and this cardstock is already cut down. You'll notice there's a little peak on both sides. Um, I'm using my presser because I have arthritis and this just makes it easy. If you wanna know how to make this, you can go on my blog and um, search for tools. There's many tools. You can buy one of these for like $30, $20, whatever, depending on how it's made. I made mine for about $1.50. Um, this is interesting. I did it on the, <laughs> this was a scrap piece of paper um, and I was supposed to uh, do it on the other side. It was very light. As you can see, now I have a shadow. So first rule of stamping is that's why there's two sides. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do it again. Um, and it's been inked once, so it should blend quickly. Um, do that. I want to do the balmy blue. That was funny. I had <laughs> I had it face down so I didn't notice when I picked it up and then laid it over the stamp that I had already stamped on it. So you do get some fails, um, that, but that was techniques I was trying. So I've tried different ways to do this. I did do it with the um, baby wipes and it does come out very nice. Um, it's just very messy and because this stamp is so big, you have to like lay four baby wipes down it. It was just not something I felt like I wanted to do often. Let me try this again on the other side. <laughs> now, if you don't do it right away, you can huff on it, which is basically not blowing, actual huffing. There we go. And then I'll just trim it off a little bit because it's smaller. Um, then uh, huffing is this when you put it up and then you <sighs> expel breath. But for the second and third times we do it, I'm going to do it with the mister. And I put it fairly far away because I don't really want blobs of it. But like I said, this is a very good mister. So I'm just going to spray it a couple of times. And then I'm going to take some of this and I'll try to center it better than I did last time. Like I said, you can trim it up and make a wider border if, um, if it looks like it's not centered enough for you. Um, and I'm just making sure I get all of the parts on it. And lift it up, look how beautiful that is. That's gonna be so pretty. So I'm gonna put that side, we have to put it aside to dry. And then I'm gonna do it again, because there's still enough ink on there. Again, I'm gonna mist from far away. A little bit far away. Um, make sure there's nothing on the back side this time. And then I'm gonna lay this down. Let's see, something like this. I think I'll put that down a little crooked. That's okay too. So as you can see, I, I daubed it once or I put ink on it once. That one's too light. So sometimes you can get away with three, sometimes just two. Now I'm gonna use this other side. <laughs> when I do it again, but I'm not going to demonstrate again. So again, three dollars on it. You can get at least one um, extra, if you will, extra stamping by putting some um, spray mist on it, water. Um, we'll just go ahead and continue and make the cards so that we don't take all day. Um, but then I'll show you some samples. And what I would probably do, just looking at this, this one's quite prevalent. So I might, I don't know, you could go either way. You could make it the background this color or you can make the background this color. 
um, or this color. I, I actually have all three, but that's what it looks like. First generation, second generation, and they're still drying. So I'm going to put them aside. I'll bring out the, some of the generations I had. Um, well, that's not it. This is the first generation. And then this was second. And then I did get enough, as far as I was concerned, of a third generation to keep it and make a card out of it. So we're going to end up using the first generation mostly because it's dry, <laughs> which is a great reason, right? All right. So we're just going to... See, now this one had not been cut because I grabbed an extra sheet of cardstock. So you wanna to try to keep this as centered as possible. In this case, everything is further up. So I'm gonna take the whole quarter inch off the bottom um, because that will make it look more centered. It gets trickier on the sides because as you can see, there's not a lot of room on either side and that's basically because it's a big stamp. So I would probably see how much I could get out of this. As you can see, maybe you cannot, um, almost a quarter and I'm only cutting off a little bit of an island. As you can see, it's a little dot. I don't think anybody's gonna look and notice that. Um, and then I want this to be five, uh, five and a quarter inches. Um, so I am gonna take just a very little piece off there. As you can see, I left most of Alaska there probably a little bit on the barrier islands or whatever they call those ones that are up there. Um, so that's that. So we're gonna glue that on. I use multi-purpose glue almost 100% of the time. Not, I mean, there are a few occasions when I will use tear and tape, but this is very economical. Um, it works very well. It's very strong, so I don't see the need. Costs $4 a bottle, which is cheaper than you can get it at Hobby Lobby, um, at least in my experience. So there we go. We've got this centered on a card. And then we're going to put, make sure this one's been cut down. Yep. Um, we're going to put this on the inside so that you can write something. And I can tell you, I just thought of something on that one that didn't turn out so hot. Let me get this on here. You can use parts of it as well, and I think that would look very good if you took, I don't know what I did with it, here it is, um, or one of the others that you didn't quite like enough. Um, and let me just see what it looks like if I cut it down, where you might like get the part that's actually dark. It's of the United States. Chances are people will recognize the country and maybe just cut it off right there. Let's see what that looks like, just for the heck of it. Um, you might be able to just kind of lay it down on here and just have it. Now, it's not quite dark enough, so I probably wouldn't do that. But anyway, that's an idea of something that you could do if you wanted to have a little bit of decoration on the inside. And then today we're gonna be using um, Where'd it go? We should have. Oh, here they are. Um, so I generally, because I don't know exactly where I want them situated, I usually go ahead and do the two punches. Now, I'll be honest, a lot of times I just go ahead and make the tail if that's all I'm using, making the points a little bit harder. So this is one by four and a half. You slide it in, it's the si biggest size. I make it just a hair smaller. And I do turn around because I want it to check and make sure that the point is in the center, which it is. So the four and a half is the colored cardstock using it to match um, the, uh, the border. And then this is the other end that comes out. And then I do the same thing with this, but this is three quarters of an inch. Um, but I, I still put it in so it goes down into the second groove. You still have to make sure it's centered in the back. And then we'll put that in here. You can see there's one, two, so you can make it half inch, three quarters of an inch, and one inch. So that gives you the ability 
to um, make make a border around it when you put it down. Oops, this was obviously not four and a half. Or this was not four and a half. It was not. Well, we're just having all kinds of lovely trials and tribulations here. Let's see if I can get a piece. I'm sorry. I've had a lot of different, um, trying different things, and then I was trying to put away the things I didn't want to show you because I didn't like the way they came out. So I'm making this just a hair less, and when I say hair, it's not even a measurement, um, just so that it's easier, and then this will be by four and a half, just so that it's easier um, sliding in and out because that's an exact measurement. Um, let me check the white one and see if that i think that one might be okay um so let's try that again Put this away um so it takes up the full full slot i'll turn it over and make sure it's centered and then we'll try this again and see what happens it's always an adventure when you stamp sometimes um then sometimes you get lucky and it's right every time which is also good, but yeah, see this was, the white one was not even the right size. So we're just gonna go with it and give it a little bit more room on there. Um, we need to stamp, and this this comes from uh, botanical layers. It just happens to say, you mean the world to me. So I'm using that from this stamp set. I'm making it the same as the outside. Um, which isn't necessarily the way it has to be. You could do it with black or some other color. I think what I'm gonna do is put it here and then I think I am going to flip it over because I don't like the way that's stamped. I usually use the stamp positioner as you may know of me because uh, if you follow me, that's what I why I usually do it, so it's always in the right spot. But I know a lot of people there, so it, you can do it without the stamp positioner. The other thing I'm gonna do, since this side, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to, it, this side doesn't have much on it, so I'm gonna snip it off, go side to side, and then I'm gonna do that one again. Get it a little bit closer. It doesn't have to be exact, um, but I, I would like it to be a little bit better. There we go. Look at my messy desk. And I like that better. It's closer. All right, and then I'm gonna put a gem on it. Um, I haven't decided what gem I'm gonna use, and then I'm gonna use a dimensional to make it stand out. Try to get this centered. Let's see. I usually use rhinestones um, and color them. I do that a lot because I, I just like um, having whatever I want. But we'll go ahead from the annual catalog. This is Glossy Dots Assortment. And as you can see, there are, uh, this has got yellow on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of the yellows. Um, I think the medium size will do. And put that right there. There. And then we will go ahead and get some dimensionals on the back of it. And as soon as I get this down, I will show you some other examples that I made. If you don't want to do watercoloring the way I did with using the daubers and the stamp pads, um, you of course can, can use other techniques to do it. Um, I think I wanna do it way down here. There you go. Um, this is one I did, it's much more subtle, um, even though I used this is a different color, but these two are the same. Actually, this is Night of Navy. Um, I use our blender brushes 
right on the stamp itself, going from the ink pad to the um, stamp itself. And it gives you a very pretty but subtle look. It's, it's definitely different than that. And then I thought, well, what if I just want to stamp it? <laughs> so this is one done with one color. Uh, this is soft succulent. And as you can see, it this is not a misprint. This is made to look like an old map, um, more like the distinctive stamps, although this isn't considered distinctive. Um, but that's that's just flat out straight stamping. Then I did a bunch of others. I tried, let me see. Try not to put your colors too similar. I think that that doesn't work out quite as much. Um, if you want it to look really old and craggy, I used more water and it was a little splotchy. So you had a little bit more um, of the roughness, if you will. Um, and that's about all that were successful, I think. <laughs> there was, I mean, these, a lot of these I will be using. This one's a little less rust than that. It's still used with um, putting a lot of water on it rather than the microfine mist. Um, so if you like that look, that's a, a great one. I'm not gonna be throwing any of those cards away. This one I will throw away. Um, and I think that's all I had to tell you. This watercolor card um, that you're gonna see now is in our new uh, January to April. Uh, mini catalog. It is also going to be um, celebration from January to January 3rd, I think, to February 28th. So it's only two months this time. Um, but Stampin' Up! is changing the way the calendar rolls out simply so that there will be something new coming out every two months. So something for you to look forward to. Rather, of course, we'll always have the annual catalog and that will come out uh, May, May, early May, first, second, third, something like that. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me um, at my email address if you want to know something I may not have remembered to tell you. Um, my website, if you're on YouTube, is stampmesilly.com. All of the directions will have the link to the directions, which is at, well, actually on my blog. So if you're on YouTube, follow the link and it'll take you to the blog where all of the directions are are written out and I will have pictures of all of these. I really appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed this, please click subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Even if you don't subscribe, it lets me know what I'm showing is what you want to see or not see. I hope you had a great holiday and I look forward to seeing you more in the new year. Bye.